Hey YouTube, Shukman Shinobi here with a review of the SH Figure Arts Garo from, well, Garo. Um, <laughs> so, uh, this is the Koga version. Huh, Koga, not from Pokemon, from Garo. Uh, the Koga version, not the uh, Taiga version. Uh, the Taiga version has a little bit different coloring of the figure and includes a huge sword that uh, that he had. So that is a Tomashi Web exclusive. I'm currently unbeknownst whether I'm going to get it or not. But um, it's on a potential buy list. So be on the lookout for that. I'm probably going to get zero first. But anywho, yeah, Garo is here. He's pretty cool. I got him from HLJ's uh, sale. He was 30% off, which was a little bit better than everywhere else considering Amiami sound like only 15% off. But anyway, uh, Box is done in a black with his helmet right here, which is really, really awesome awesome looking uh garo the logo for the show garo on the side there and there the top and the bottom all shiny everywhere he's all garo so take a look at the figure uh details up the s so uh here's his helmet his head sculpt is absolutely spot on perfect uh i mean you got the silver right here on the ears his, like, whisker head-like thing uh, is really, really fantastic. The wolf design is just spot-on awesome, to say the least. Uh, here's chest detailing. Everything that needs to be detailed is sculpted in there. His belts right here. All of his armor pieces. His little plugs that don't really do anything. His gauntlets. Here's his back. Back design is even sculpted really, really well. And here's his legs. Articulation-wise, obviously his shoulder pads do get in the way. Uh, so you have to swing the arms around. So you can't get any sort of straight up, straight up positions. But if you maneuver his arm like this, you can get a straight up pose. So it's it's I mean it's an articulation hindrance of course, but it it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, particularly because the the armor in the show had that problem too. So uh, his his joints are a tiny bit loose, uh, not as much as some of the double figures I have in the O's figures in particular. But um, someone's got their base up. Uh, but they're a little bit loose, but it's nothing to where it's a real pain. Everything's fairly solid if I wiggle them around. Um, but yeah, articulation-wise, it's the same as uh, as standard figure arts. Hips, hip joints are a little bit tight for me. but And the armor does kind of hinder the, uh, the full back, but really his leg doesn't need to go like that ever. And the feet are the original figure art diecast feet, which are apparently making a return. So, for those... Actually, it's a... The die cast feet on a ball joint, which is pretty fun. So it's a mixture of both. Pretty interesting, but it is indeed die cast. So let's set good old Koga back here while we take a look at his accessories. So obviously the back looks kind of plain in spots uh, because he comes with these two pieces. These two pieces, which are identical, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. And they plug in right here. When he is in this, in this mode. So they just plug in back here. Which is still pretty cool. And uh, they, when he doesn't have the cape, this is what his back looks like. But you can unplug these. And plug in this, his cape, which is done really well. It is a softer plastic, so it is a little bit pliable. Um, in fact, if you kind of warmed it up and went like this, you could probably get a little bit more of a flowing pose. But that's up to you whether you want to potentially ruin your cape. But the paint's really, really well done. You've got those same pieces right here. The whole painted design. The design at the bottom is done really well. This side, not so much, but uh, that side's going to get covered up. So uh, those two... Holes right there, just plug into the pegs right there that we just plugged uh, those pieces in. So that'll just snap right in, and there you go, we have his cape. So I'm going to keep his cape on. He didn't 
use the cape that much in the show, but the cape just looks awesome on this figure. So I'm going to keep the cape on him. So stay. Alright. So uh we'll save the sword for last just because I feel like it. So you have a uh hand like this because you can take the sword and it'll hold the sheath. It's molded to fit the shape of the sheath. So if you need him to hold the sheath for some reason, you have a left sheath holding hand. And he just fell over. Poor guy. Uh, you get two uh, relaxed hands. Which are, are done really, really well. There's some silver paint in there too. As well as his uh, his ring, which I forgot the uh, name of right off the top of my head. Zaruba, that's what it was. So Zaruba is right here, hanging out on his hand, which is cool. So this one has Zaruba on it too. And then lastly, we have another Zaruba. Uh, weapon holding hands for both the right and left hands. So really cool. And then lastly, of course, we have the Garo Ken. His uh, sword, the sheath, is done really, really well. Uh, no real problems there. The hilt of the sword is done really well as well. Lots of walls in there. The little logo there, the jewels, the grip. And of course it comes right out. Nice black and silver blade with the little gold running through it right there. Uh, just really, really nice. Um, I'm not going to use the sheath for anything. But I will give him the sword. So let's bring him in. Give him a weapon holding hand. Just like that. So now he has a sword. And then this hand will just be uh, relaxed. Alright, so now we just need a pose. So let's refocus this. And find a pose. Uh, the, the cape does hang lower, so it's hard to get a, a, uh, like a really, really good pose. And then the hips are a little bit loose once you get them kind of like undone. So it'll be, it's a little bit difficult to get a really, really awesome pose, but, and something like that. That looks cool. We'll go with that. So, uh, here is Garo. As long as he stays. Alright, so um, if you're a fan of Garo and you don't have any sort of Garo figures, um, I definitely recommend picking this up. Uh, he wasn't seemingly as popular as some of the other figure arts, so you might be able to find him on some sales if you wait a little bit. But um, I, he looks really nice. I like the gold used. It is definitely a more goldish color than uh, Kiva Emperor. Kiva Emperor had more of a yellow tint. This definitely is more of a gold. Uh, and reminds me a little bit more of the gold that was used on like Zeba and uh, Kintaros and stuff like that. So really nice. He's got the diecast feet for you diecast feet fans. Joints are a tiny bit loose in places for me, but that might just be a mileage may vary situation, so I can't really fault the figure too much for that. But, uh, I mean, if you have the Sochaku Henshin figure, the equipped and prop figures, you might not really need this guy because you probably already have really nice representations of Garo. But um, if you're new to Garo and you don't have any figures, I give the figure out a chance. I think it's really nice, so... I uh, definitely recommend it. You can check out our written review at risersandrumbles.com, bringing the latest token news in the craziest way possible. And of course, you can talk about Garo, its awesomeness, and of course, fig yards at the Ram boards at risersandrumbles.com slash forums. So take care and have a great one. Bye.